Remember. and he'd read the whole recitation off the back of a sea dog matchbox. <laughs> that was Mr. Mick Casey. Yes. Anyway, my memory is not what it used to be, either, so I'm going to lay it after just in case I forget it, because he never could tell. <laughs> this is about... The, don't stay for me. Little bit of Bessie's boy. <coughs> Says, I to me, missus, be gone, ma'am. There's something to see on your mind. She says, see, you're right round something. But if it happens, it's on me behind. 
There's a boil that would make Joe be jealous, and it hurts me no end when I see it. Says I, go to the hospital, missus. They might have to cut it a bit. Says she, I just hate to be sure the part of me personal is that. Says I, don't be fussy, them doctors say things far more hard than that. So missus goes off, tagged up tasty, and they're at the hospital door. They tells her to see the house doctor, whose office is room 34. But she hunts up and down and she finds it, and knocks, and the voice said, come in. And there's a handsome young fellow, in white, from his heels to his chin. I got a big boil, says me missus, and it hurts me like all when I sit. <laughs> and Ron, that's me husband, has asked me to ask you to cut it a bit. So blushing, she plops up her courage, and she hastens to show him the place. And he gives it a proper inspection, with a heap of surprise on his face. Then he says with an accent to Scotland, What you hate is a boil I can feel. You'd better consult the head doctor. They call him Professor O'Neill. He's special for boils and carbuncles. You'll find him in room 63. No charge, man. It's been a rare pleasure. Just tell him you're coming from me. So Mrs. She thanks him politely, and she hunts up and down like before, till she comes to a big handsome room with Professor O'Neill on the door. And once more she plops up her courage and knocks, and a voice says, All right. And she enters and sees a fat fellow with whiskers, all tagged up in white. I got a big boil, says me missus. <laughs> and if you're sure you don't mind, I'd like you to see it a moment. It hurts me because it's behind. <laughs> so blushing as red as a beetroot, she hastened to show him the spot. And he says, with a look of amazement, So ma'am, it must hurt you a lot. <laughs> but he puts any specs to regard it. And he finally says with a frown, I bet you as sore as the devil, especially when you sit down. But I think it's a case for the surgeon. You better consult Dr. Hoyle. I have no hesitation in saying that your boil is one hell of a boil. <laughs> so Mrs. She thanks him for saying that her boil is a hell of a boil. And she hunts all around and she finds a room that is marked Dr. Hoyle. Well, by now she's fair got her wind up and she trembled in every limb. But she thinks, after all, he's a doctor. I mustn't be bashful with him. She's made a good stuff with me, missus. So she knocks and the voice says, who's there? It's me, says me, Bessie. And she enters a room that is spacious and bare. And the wise looking old fellow greets her. And he too is tagged up in white. It's the room where they cut, she thinks, Bessie and she shakes like a jelly with fright. But thinking she'd best get it over, she hastened to show him the place. And he looks at her kind of surprised like, and he gets very red in the face. But he looks at it most conscientious, from every angle of view. Then he says with a shrug of his shoulders, poor lady, I'm sorry for you. It wants to be caught, but you should have a medical bloke to do that. Sir, why don't you go to the hospital where all them doctors is at? <laughs> you see, ma'am, this part of the building is closed and I can't repair us. And us fellas, well, we're only the painters, painting the halls and the stairs. That was excellent, Ron. Quite a surprise ending, wasn't it? Well, yeah. Now we're going to hear from Ray Han, no stranger to any of us. I call, I call him the mayor of Miracine sometimes because he's on all Beckham calls. He's going to do Harry Dunn. I just love that song. I spend so much time singing it to myself, Ray. So come on up and let us hear from you. In Miracine, you know, songs that were sung here were always somebody's songs and uh, somebody's song was this was sung by Leo Pius and this one was sung by this person and this one was sung by Mr. Ned and this one was sung by so and so well the song that we're going to sing tonight was usually sung by my uncle Edgar and he's long gone but we'll sing it for him
he started on his way for Buffalo the next day. He hired with a lumbering man in Michigan far away. He worked away for three long months and often would write home. St. Winter will soon be over and then I will go home. One morning as Harry rose from his bunk, no smile was on his brow. He called his chum outside the door, whose name was Charlie Down. Said Charlie, boy, I had a dream, it fills my heart with before he died, I, I think. think. Was it? My sister and Your sister and your niece? Okay. So Gabe, anyway, will come up now and sing Gabe's song. It's a very special song. <laughs> 